Sleeping Beauty just pricked her finger. She may have fallen asleep, but her immune system is hard at work. An important part of her innate immune system, her skin, has been breached, and bacteria are entering her body. The first immune cells they encounter are mast cells and dendritic cells. These cells can distinguish self from non-self, thanks to the recognition of pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs, which are molecules associated with pathogens. This recognition is not specific to any invader, but rather identifies a general attribute common to pathogens. This recognition is thanks to their pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs. The PAMPs they recognize can include bacterial lipopolysaccharides. Now that microbial components have been recognized, the body springs into action, and the inflammatory response is initiated. The mast cells stay on the battlefield, releasing histamine and heparin. Histamine causes vasodilation of nearby blood vessels, and heparin is an anticoagulant. The result is increased blood flow to the infected area, which allows more white blood cells to get there. The mast cells also release cytokines, which are cell signaling proteins that affect the behavior of nearby cells. In this case, the cytokines are used to call macrophages and neutrophils to the area. Macrophages are the largest phagocytic cells in the body and can engulf 100 pathogens each. Neutrophils are the most abundant white blood cells. They release cytokines as well, amplifying the inflammatory response. They attack pathogens in three ways. Phagocytosis, engulfing pathogens, and they can ingest up to 20 each. Degranulation, the release of soluble antimicrobials. And the release of neutrophil extracellular traps, or NETs. NETs are pretty cool. Think of neutrophils as the Spider-Mans of your immune system, with NETs as their webs. NETs are primarily composed of the neutrophil's DNA and bind pathogens. This binding occurs thanks to positively charged proteins on the bacteria's surface interacting with negatively charged chromatin fibers. Meanwhile, dendritic cells engulf antigens, foreign substances that elicit an immune response, and break them up into smaller pieces called epitopes. Dendritic cells are a type of antigen-presenting cell, or APC, because they then display the epitopes on major histocompatibility complex 2, or MHC2, at their surface. Dendritic cells move out of the infected area and into the lymph nodes. So, thus far, all the defenses we've discussed belong to the innate immune system. The innate immune system has nonspecific means of intruder identification and resistance. However, when the dendritic cells enter the lymph nodes, they link the innate immune system to the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system consists of T cells and B cells, and brings in antipathogenic weaponry specific to the attacker. T cells are produced in the thymus, differentiating into four types, helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, regulatory T cells, or TREGs, and memory T cells. Helper T cells help with B and T cell differentiation, and call macrophages and other cells to the battle. Cytotoxic T cells are the main soldiers, binding and lysing infected cells. They recognize infected cells thanks to antigens displayed on MHC class 1 molecules. All nucleated cells have MHC class 1 molecules that can display antigens upon infection, while only antigen-presenting cells also have MHC class 2 molecules. TREGs use a negative feedback loop to regulate the immune response, making sure it doesn't get too extreme and hurt the body unnecessarily. Importantly, they maintain tolerance to self-antigens, preventing autoimmune diseases. Memory T cells remain after the infection has passed in case of reinfection, at which point they can rapidly multiply and mount a faster and stronger immune response. Helper T cells and TREGs are CD4 positive, meaning that they express CD4 glycoprotein on their cell membranes. Cytotoxic T cells are CD8 positive, and memory T cells can be either. T cells are specific to one antigen. After leaving the thymus, they circulate the body until an APC presents an antigen that matches their T cell receptor, or TCR. Following this initial activation, the T cell's CD4 or CD8 molecule also binds the MHC of the APC, stabilizing the connection. Helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells also need secondary signals, as well as cytokines, to become fully activated. Following these signals, the T cell begins to divide rapidly and moves to the site of inflammation to fight the pathogen. At the infection site, mast cells, neutrophils, and epithelial cells can produce cytokines to induce further activation and proliferation of the T cells. Immature B cells can be activated either by attaching to a free-floating antigen or thanks to helper T cells or dendritic cells that present an epitope matching their B cell receptors, or BCRs. BCRs consist of a membrane-bound antibody, which is a large Y-shaped protein that binds antigens, CD79A and CD79B. The B cell receptor and antigen undergo cell-mediated endocytosis. Recognition of an antigen stimulates B cells to proliferate, and the activated B cells undergo clonal expansion. 
As they proliferate, these many clones undergo somatic hypermutation. Basically, an enzyme called activation-induced deaminase, or AID, introduces point mutations into the clones. For some clones, this results in an increased affinity to the antigen, while for others, this means a decreased affinity. The antigen is proteolytically broken down, and an epitope is then displayed on the B cell's surface, attached to an MHC class II protein. Before the B cell can do anything, a helper T cell with a complementary TCR and CD4 positive glycoprotein must bind the antigen. The T helper cell then releases cytokines that let the B cell take the next step. This is a safety mechanism to prevent accidental activation of the B cells. The B cells that have decreased affinity then undergo apoptosis, while the B cells with increased affinity differentiate, becoming either a plasma cell or a memory B cell. The plasma cells produce antibodies matching their BCRs into the blood and lymph. Meanwhile, the memory B cells store antibodies in case of future reinfection. When antibodies bind antigens, they label them for destruction by cells such as macrophages and neutrophils. B cells mediate your humoral immune response, so-called because it involves substances in your body fluids. So at the end of the day, Sleeping Beauty wasn't just saved by Prince Philip, but through the collaborative efforts of a whole army of immune cells inside her. The primary immune response beat the infection. A primary immune response is the immune system's response to the first exposure to a particular pathogen. There is a latent period during which the adaptive immune system is mobilized, since appropriate T and B cells need to be found and cloned. However, memory T and B cells ensure that a secondary immune response, should the same pathogen ever reinfect, will be much stronger and faster. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would help me make more videos. And make sure to comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Also, it would be really nice if you could support me on Patreon. Thank you.